after a little bit of an absence because things have been a little bit busy as you know life gets in the way sometimes but we are back now welcome back to another episode of victoria beckham's mixtape which sounds an awful lot like a cat being stroked backwards with an angle grinder my name is jack and over on this side is ben and we are just two blokes who like to rant rave and ramble about anything to do with culture movies tv series Anything we can get our hands on as we like to cover a lot of topics and cover a lot of bases on this channel as that's what we do. And if you're interested, then please consider subscribing and commenting as we do love the feedback and it gives us more ideas. So without further ado, let's get ready to rant on this one. So this is going to be something which I know we're probably going to get a lot of flack for, but mind you, what's new? Um... <laughs> As you know, we all have opinions, unfortunately, and there is a few things. We all have different tastes, you know, TV series, movies and all sorts. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, not every, it's like an acquired taste. Everybody's got their own taste. But I think there is a few which um, can be more agreed on and more disagreed on. So we're going to go into that, which is overrated TV shows, series and movies. And I'm going to kick this off because I know there's going to be quite a few people I know that are going to be quite upset with this one. And I'm going to kick things off with the films which need to stop being made. Is the Fast and Furious films. I freaking hate those films, especially because I'm not a car buff. I know nothing about cars. But it's the same recycled formula all over again. Would you agree, Ben? Yeah, I mean... So me and Jack have got a joint friend of ours that is an obsessed nut when it comes to cars and these He's movies. Gearhead. <laughs> well, I think it's more than gearhead half the time. But the thing is, the whole plot logic within all of these movies is that they have to build or they have to do something insanely fast that a car of said description would not normally be able to do unless they modify it to do what needs to be done. And while it was interesting for the first one, because it was part of the time, the era in which the early 2000s, it's every okay. book... I mean, the, the first, like, one, two, three are acceptable. Yes, it's sort of... It's a mixture of, like, a heist-ish movie, but it's also about, like, class system and just random sheer explosions. Yes. But then you get to the point where it's got into film number nine, nothing has changed. You still oh, have... Are we even at the... Oh, the spin-off of Hobbs and Shaw as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this is the problem, is the fact that it's just the same formula every movie, but they just span out so many different variations. And I'm sure people who love these movies but don't like the comic book movies that me and Jack like can say the same about comic book movies, which is fair enough. Yes. But can you honestly tell us that a movie about making cars as fast as possible, modified for a heist or whatever, can go on past three movies? I personally cannot see how they've lasted nine movies. Well, it's the definition of insanity, just repeating the same action and expecting a different outcome. I mean, if you're into cars and everything like that, then fair enough, you know, that might be your taste. Personally, me, I know bugger all about cars. All I know is you can drive them and they get you from A to B. And that's about as, as far as my knowledge goes. So I suppose if you're not that way inclined, like our mutual friend that we have, I suppose, you know, they'd be more into that because, you know, it piques their interest because we're not always going to agree on certain things. But it's just I find when it's done to death over and over again, it's... How many times can you milk that cash cow before it starts running dry or the cow's pretty much died at this point? Well, the thing is, obviously, I don't think it would ever die. They would just either find a way of continuing it on with some other random person added into it, or they, if whenever Vin Diesel does kick the bucket, they'd probably just find a way of CGIing in. Nah, I mean, they, no. They'll be going. They'll be going to it's like like Fast and Furious thirty two. When instead of Fast and Furious, they're old people now, and it's slow and whiny. <laughs> well, it's it's not fast cars. It's fast it's mobility scooters. Well, it's not fast mo um, cars. It's fast mobility scooters going. <laughs> oh no! We've only got battery power left for another one kilometer. Let's push it. <laughs> I've got this image of like. 
a really old rock, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know, with muscles, but he's like firing a gun off the back of a mobility scooter and Vin Diesel's hanging on the back. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. So but the that, thing is yeah. sorry the thing is as well is i don't know if it's in the works but there has been talks apparently that they wanted to do a movie with the transformers franchise oh god the michael bay formula uh, it's good <laughs> yes pretty much i just uh right anyway so next one all right so the next one I'm sorry, a lot of people are going to hate me for this. I just could never get into it. And even though I'm into similar stuff, I just, to be honest, I found I can only describe this as a like a porno with a plot. And that's Game of Thrones. I, can't, I don't know. I, I personally don't see the appeal myself. I found it intensely boring, to be honest. I found it intensely boring. All it was was just tits, tits, tits. Somebody got shagged. Tits. Dragons. Somebody got shagged again. That's all I really saw it as. And the plot's just so long and convoluted. I just got so lost. I tried. I really tried to give Game of Thrones a chance. I tried. And it was after the first season where I was like, nah, this is crap. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> That's my opinion. I mean, I never really looked into it because... There are, there's quite a few books which, personally myself, I'd rather read the books than look into the adaptation, first of all, and then go into the adaptation if it's any good. Yeah. But as Jax just said, like the majority of the plot is basically shagging random people. The whole point is the fact that people are trying to basically subs take over the main king, because I think he dies within the first series or something and so there's everyone else is basically grabbing for power yeah. and so essentially all it is is that you've got a circle of all these people that are pretending to trust each other which don't trust each other that either shag or stab that's literally it and a lot of incest <laughs> well yeah again it's I mean, a lot of shagging it's a lot of stabbing of scenes, just lots of scenes of Amelia Clark getting her kit off <laughs> yeah I mean d there's don't get me wrong, she is an incredibly looking great uh, lady, but <laughs> my point... <clears throat> this got filthy very quickly. <laughs> oh, Merton. Uh, <laughs> the point being is, like, if you have to use sex as a plot to draw people in, it obviously doesn't have a plot. No. No. But... I mean, it's like you've got Emily Clark for the guys, you've got, obviously, Jason Momoa for the ladies. Yeah, but the rest of... That's a beautiful specimen of a man. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think much of the cast actually have substance. Because, I mean, there's like... Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a British actor in it, which he was in Misfits as the creepy guy. Yes, true. I can't remember who that was. But the thing is, because he, the first thing I ever saw him as was the creepy guy from Misfits, that's all he ever is to me. So uh, whatever role he plays, he always looks a creepy guy. Yeah. <laughs> but I just... I mean, the thing is, it's like, you got, obviously, the whole point of Emily Clark's character, she's meant to be the Queen of Dragons, but they don't have an awful lot to do with dragons within the thing itself. No. Other than the fact that she is just some powerful person that can control dragons, that's about it. Yeah, I've been, apart from, I, as far as I know, I don't even know, like, because I'm not in the loop, guys. Has, Game of, has the Game of Thrones series ended or is it still going? I mean, this thing has been going since I swear I was a bloody, not since I swear I was in the womb. It feels like it's going on. It feels like it's taking too long to die. <laughs> oh, God, yes. But, one of my little series that I want to nitpick in terms of people making it grander than what it is yeah. is How I Met Your Mother. Oh, God, I hate that bloody show. <laughs> it had a really interesting premise about the idea that you got Ted explaining to his kids how they how he met but their that, mother. It, it was the most anticlimactic ending ever. <laughs> well, it wasn't even that. It was more of a sort of stab in the gut because it was basically 
him explaining himself, his reasons why he should be allowed to date Robin again, because the entire premise behind the series is that he meets Robin, even though they're not, she's not their aunt, she's called Aunt Robin because it's just what you do. And he basically creates these like scenarios and way of justifying why he should get back with her once their mum had passed away, which I think from what I've read in sources, it was about a month, maybe two, after the mum's death that he's having this chat with the kids. Which is even more of a sort of disgusting thing to do. Because, like, I mean, how... I know ever... peeve, like, over the many seasons it's been on, it doesn't take you that long to explain it. Those kids must have been sat there for years. <laughs> well, there is, like, a spoof thing that they did with the actors, because what they did originally is, obviously, they film the ending and the beginning at the same time, so then the kids don't age up. Yeah. But they did do a spoof thing with the original actors as the right age, because, obviously, they aged up since the series ended, and basically said that, we've been on this couch for 10 years, Dad. I've not left this couch for 10 years. We've been surviving off eating flies. And I've had some unsavory thoughts about my sister. I can't remember the last time I saw a woman. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, God. But the thing is, it's just like, it's not a chat you have with your kids, really, about... Can I justify sleeping with my ex that I've had as my friend throughout this time of being my partner who's recently just passed away? No. I mean, the, the thing is, is like once Friends, the TV show ended, every single comedy network wanted to create the same charisma as Friends because well, it was such a big hit and everyone wanted to have a piece of the pie. Well, that's the thing. Like, even though it's a stupendously popular show, I never found Friends that funny. I, I think found most of the characters more annoying than anything. I think like the first few series, like the first half of the the big long run of it, was quite good. But over time, certain characters, obviously certain actors, had issues or whatever, and they just it spawned a load of crap towards the end, just to make things interesting. But the other thing as well as with How I Met Your Mother is that there is a spin-off series coming out this year called How I Met Your Father. Oh, how bloody boring. Yes, and it's got Hilary Duff. She's oh, going God, to... it, it, I've forgotten completely about her. Yeah, so, well, so there's a lot of people. But basically, she's the mum character to what Ted is in How I Met Your Mother, basically explaining to her kids how she met their father. And I'm hoping that they don't repeat the same mistake, that they basically spawn it out to basically justify the fact that, yeah, my partner died, can I shag this person, kids? Like... <laughs> oh. I mean, the thing is, it's just, like... You have some interesting subplots within the series itself, but other than, like, minor stories, it lasted about eight seasons, I think, give or take. Something like just that. Just to basically explain the idea that I finally met your mother on a rainy day. We managed to have like the same umbrella, blah de, blah blah. We got married. You came along, and then she had cancer. She's popped her clocks now. Can I shag Robin again? Like, yeah. <laughs> it it doesn't take eight seasons to do that. It could have just taken five, where you could have had season one. I mean, this, I think the whole point was that she was meant to be a recurring character as a sub-character in the behind the scenes. She was in episode one, but you never saw her face because it was a completely different actress to what they finished with at the end of the series. Yeah. So then that proves the point. It went on too long. Yeah, of course. But <sighs> I think... It could have just been so much shorter. I mean, like I say, there have been so many American comedy series since Friends ended that they've tried to recreate the same magic and it's not worked. I mean, another very bizarre series, which I honestly think is the most fudgy series of all, is called Baby Daddy. 
So it's a comedy series that I recently saw, I think it was a couple, well, it was about a year or so ago that recently appeared on E4 here in the UK. It's probably been running in America for about three years longer. Basically, episode one opens up to Ben, Danny and their roommate, whatever the fudge his name, I cannot remember. Ben and Danny are brothers. They share an apartment with the same guys. And basically, you get a knock at the door. Ben is basically a bartender. Open up the door and find a baby on their doorstep. So it's kind of like three men and a baby. But it's basically Ben is the actual dad. And the mum just abandoned the kid. And so he's just having to struggle to try and be a dad for the baby. Sounds brilliant, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it would be if the guy wasn't a complete and utter tool bag. Like... <laughs> He's an absolute douche to every single girl. The first female character that you come across is his like longtime best friend from high school who used to be fat and now is absolutely fit. And it turns out that Ben has a crush on her, but so does his brother. Okay, it doesn't get too bad. But the thing is, Danny, his older brother, ends up having realizing that well basically admitting to riley that he's had a crush on her for well since they were kids but never did anything so it gets a bit more convoluted and it's like riley dates ben for a bit then finds out that danny liked her or still likes her so she ditches ben tries to pursue danny who's now found someone else which gets even more convoluted when it turns out that he basically Realise he's fucked up, and they get together, and they actually get married. And now, this is a comedy, right? This is a comedy, yes. But in the real world, could you honestly say that you'd be happy to get married to somebody that your brother or sister once dated? Not really. No. Like, no but sane person again, would. But then again, I know crazy ideas have happened, like, even honourable mention, and I can say this on YouTube, that TV, sh that comedy show called Shit's Creek, which I've watched episodes of it. I don't find it's not funny at all. It's just the problem is with like all kind of comedy series from, I suppose you could argue from the 2010s onwards or maybe even earlier. But I suppose comedians are sort of like the very last sort of generation of comedy because with TV series and comedy, like we've said in the past, Pretty much every gag there is has been done. Yeah. So it's pretty much just recycled. So what can you really do that's new when everything's already been done? Well, there is also the argument that we've made before that also everything's so PC these days that it's hard to make a joke. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I've only seen clips of Shit's Creek and it looks okay, the fact that he's got the dad from American Pie makes me laugh because he seems to be the dad of God knows how many different comedy series. Yeah. But the whole premise is the fact that basically it's an obnoxious rich family that basically have to get a reality check. Yeah. So while it does seem reasonably funny, I would just prefer it if it was more like a piss take of the Kardashians. I think it, in a way, it kind of seems like it was attempting that, but didn't want to get sued, so they had to tweak minor things. I even, honourable, that's an honourable mention, actually, uh, keeping up with the Kardashians and all their bloody spin-offs, like, I'm sorry, I cannot stand the family, like, there's a family which is only famous because of Kim's wide set vagina. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, because of one sex tape. Apart from that, they are not relevant whatsoever. If no. that sex tape never came out, they wouldn't even be relevant. No, of course not. But like all things in this world is that it takes one scandal, which, again, makes me laugh because I swear to God, it was probably released by Kin's dad, that sex tape, just to generate publicity. It would not shock me, to be honest. Because, I mean, they were a well-off family already. He was a high-class lawyer for lots of very important people, including OJ. Yeah, who basically helped get him off, like, a murder charge, which he definitely committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that that status wasn't enough to keep you rich 
it just seems a bit iffy to me that, oh, the oldest Kardashian girl that's legal age has a sex tape released of a certain rapper. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Nobody fucking cares. <laughs> yeah, and even though it happens, even if it happens now, it's not a big deal because everybody's doing it now. Um, well, I swear it's with intent as well, just because their career's gone stagnant. And I'm sorry, but I don't know how anybody can support this girl, but I think it's Kylie. I think it's Kylie Jenner, I think. But she is not a self-made millionaire. No. Not a bloody chance. Shut up. <laughs> no, of course not. None of them are self-made millionaires. It's basically picking back it off like their dad. At the end of the day, the dad's done all the hard work. The mum and the girls are full of more plastic than the Thames. <laughs> and at the end of the day, they, you got more talent from the Muppets than you do from them. But it's just like all of them have supposedly these brand deals. For what? Like, literally, what did they do to get a brand to be so... Famous to have I don't been... know. Just lots of people be cl clamoring for their autograph. I personally could walk past the Kardashians and not give a shit, to be yes. honest. Because I, I don't understand why... I may sound like a harsh prick, but I don't understand why they're relevant. And if you get to the meat and potatoes, they're only famous because of a sex tape. Well, this is it. Because the thing is, Keeping Up With The Kardashians was on TV before the scandal came about. Because it was following the family for freaking ages and i mean it's been going on for so long that i don't even understand how mtv has the time to keep it up but well when we're on the subject of overrated tv shows and such there's also we can even go into youtube videos as well so much and i don't know how it's not been cancelled yet despite all the horrible stuff that this person has legitimately done really horrible stuff which everybody on youtube has suffered for when are we going to cancel Logan Paul? <laughs> the, like the Paul brothers. I would love to live in a world where those two don't exist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, YouTube, when we upload this, please don't flag this, but what the hell were you thinking about not getting rid of them when that certain video came about when somebody was swinging from the branches? Yeah, and decided to film it and laugh. Well, who, who got punished? All of us. Else. But the thing is, like, there's a lot of YouTubers like them. You've got a few of them in the UK. You've got them probably across the entire globe. It's all fucking staged, okay? Like, at the end of the day, they are... I don't even understand what they actually have because it's not talent. It's just money. That's literally it. Like, they basically all started off as Vine stars. Some of them are more cl clever than others. But they... It's ones like Logan Paul. you got people like Ben Phillips here in the UK that are supposedly prank stars. Yeah. How is it that you're able to keep pranking the same person every single video and they never get suspicious? Oh, uh, yeah, just because, like, they get pranked so often. But every time... They very conveniently forget. <laughs> I mean, it's like I was watching, I used to follow Ben Phillips on YouTube because the first few videos of his that I found yeah. were actually genuinely funny. Yeah, yeah. But as time went on, more people got added into it and you could tell it was so staged. Like, there'd be no attempt at like using any accents for characters when they did a prank phone call on his brother or whatever. It's just like, at what point are you literally just milking these views for youngsters just to get popularity points? Yeah, because literally, even when I used to be on Facebook, not anymore, but uh, whenever like those videos would come up because... Yeah, just a little fact for you, like we were watching these fake pranksters. These fake pranksters, their videos have to be three minutes long on Facebook to be monetized. And all of them are all staged. I guarantee 99% of them are all staged. And because of that, I would often be the one who I've been blocked by, I think Ben Phillips blocked me actually, because I actually called him out on a bunch of his videos and said, no, you're fake as hell. 
and I basically got blocked from commenting. <laughs> it, but this is the thing, is the fact that obviously they're able to get away with this shit because it's either that they buy the views, they buy somebody off from Facebook or YouTube or whatever, because they are able to basically use their videos to put on adverts of random crap to then sell to kids. Because that's the only people that would genuinely actually watch these videos through. Everyone else of our age group knows better and just goes, nope. Yeah, I mean, like, even going on from there, like, this is probably, well, because I know there was, like, your one which you wanted to put out, but the probably the last one I would have for now, and then we can discuss more at the end, is I remember when The Walking Dead used to be good. And then after a few, only a few seasons, it got so friggin' boring. Like you would have like one season, I feel it was like series six, where it was like 10 episodes of just nothingness, just walking through the forest or walking through just on the odd occasion, a zombie crops up every now and again. But this, like, on a, this is it's the definition of useless filler. That, you know, obviously, like, they have to have a few boring episodes, you know, because they're trying to extend the plot and everything like that. But they extended the plot so much that a lot of viewers ended up turning off, like, The Walking Dead. And they would go on Reddit to complain about it, saying, these plots are taking way too long, there's nothing happening. And The Walking Dead, over time, started to lose viewers as well. And because there were such long waits in between seasons, nobody cared to watch it anymore because they lost so much interest. Well, the thing is, I find that a lot of comic book adaptation TV series have this issue because depending on what the actual series is about, obviously it depends on how much content you got. And the Walking Dead comics weren't around that long. Like they were really. about two, maybe three years at the most. Yeah, something about that. Which may seem a long time, but considering that it's like when you read a comic, more often than not, you get at least two, three big long story arcs per year. If a comic's once per month, it's about a quarter of a year you have one solid storyline. Yeah. Which in a TV series may take barely two episodes to cross, like to actually cover. Yeah. So then you end up, depending on how long each series is, if it's 13 episodes, that's fine, because you can obviously add in a few filler episodes, and then you've got maybe one, maybe two years' worth of stories filled up in season one. Yeah. But like you say, it's with The Walking Dead, they added in so many filler episodes. I, I could never really find it that interesting myself, because... Well, I like the idea of zombies. It was just, I don't know, it just felt a bit, huh, right, well, the world is ending, but there is still some people still alive slightly. Oh, no, some of them got attacked by zombies. Oh, no, there's another group of people that still survived. That's literally, like, every it, single plot of the episodes. But it just got to the point where I could not have given less of a crap about it. I used to like it, but because it got extended unnecessarily... And there, I, I swear there was most of the episodes from most of the season, most of the seasons that nobody even bothered to write anything. I think they just told all the actors just to ad lib and just create whatever and we'll stitch it all together. But then again, it's just, there's certain like series and so on that, you know, we've all seen it when the, you, a series reaches a certain point where it's just like, yeah, it's time to put the bullet in the back of its head now. It's going on way too long. Like, but it's pretty much The Walking Dead for ever since, I think it was, what, season six, season five? It's been on life support, pretty mm. much. It was on life support for so long, and it's like, now we need to pull the plug. Like MySpace, MySpace is still around in I 2021. Know. How? <laughs> well, speaking of another series that's been going on for far too long, and still I don't know why it's still around, The Simpsons. Oh, what are they on, like? They're in like season thirty something. I think it's like they? thirty two or thirty three, something like that. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, don't get me wrong, Simpsons. Obviously, the seasons are probably a bit shorter in terms of what normal cartoons used to be. Yeah. 
but I never really like the early on stuff. It was good because it was obviously just a good cartoon for anyone to watch about family life and sheer randomness. Like they had some life lesson stuff, and then there was obviously just some absolute randomness when it came to the Halloween episodes. But I think the reason why it sticks around so long is because everybody, well, I'd say everybody, I'd say a large portion of the fan base believe that the Simpsons predict the future because there have been supposedly episodes that predict certain things that have happened in the past 15 years, give or take. And a lot of people have theorised, and I don't know how the fudgies come up with this, but the guy that created the series, Matt Guggenheim, or whatever the hell you spell his name, is apparently a time traveller that's come back to basically create episodes to warn us about certain things. If even if even if that's so, you don't need all you need to do is just one in all you need to do is like a couple of interviews. You don't need to create a bloody series. I mean, I I personally think it's just a bunch of uh, just a bunch of tit like tin hat wearing like tin hat wearing morons that just look way too much into stuff. I just think mo- most of these predictions I think are just pure coincidence. Yeah, I mean thing is I hate to say it to you Americans but you're a bit too gullible for your own lot of safety to be honest. The fact that you had Donald Trump in charge and now you've got someone even more creepy in charge really doesn't help your case in terms of intelligence. But I just I don't see how people can honestly say that if there is so many conspiracy theories within America itself, that you have a TV series able to predict the future, why haven't anybody tried to do anything to find out answers properly? Exactly. It's mostly, as Ben always says, which he likes to say, which I swear I'm going to get tattooed on me at some point, is there's such thing, there's common, but no sense. Yes. And unfortunately, there's a hell of a lot of common in America, but no fecking sense. No, hence why, since we're talking about common sense, can somebody please explain to me why it took Lord of the Rings has the longest plot ever? Why does it take three bloody films to get a ring to a mountain? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up, (laughs) because it niggles the hell out of me it doesn't it's... take me years to get to asda but the thing is it's <laughs> technically four books because obviously the hobbit is a prequel and then you get the other three isn't it i think so but i know how much you hate prequels so. oh but the thing is it's like it takes four sodding books for a very small person to go up a mountain to get rid of a re- evil ring The only thing that the evil ring can do is make you invisible and corrupt the user. (laughs) Like, if the evil ring corrupted the user, but it made them into the personification of the evil within the ring, fine, I could understand that undeniably. The only thing that I do find interesting about the books is that they only came about due to... Um, the writer's PTSD from World War One, Because obviously back then nobody knew what PTSD was. They called it shell shock. Yeah. And like all things, it was shrug it off your shoulders and away you went. So to be able to not suppress it, but find a way of constructively using it, he created the books. But I just don't get where the logic within his head was. I'll make an evil ring that takes three sodding books to get rid of. Because the because f- before The Hobbit came about... Sorry, no, The Hobbit was the original first one. I think by the end of the book, the original guy was going to get rid of the ring and then pretends to get rid of it and keeps it for himself. And then that's why you get the other three books, because it's his son or his grandson, I don't know, that basically goes on the journey instead to get rid of the ring because he hasn't been corrupted by it, unlike his grandfather. (laughs) Like, I just, I don't see the fascination of Lord of the Rings. I mean, 
it's like we said about Game of Thrones. Like there is literally nothing fascinating about it other than just blood and guts and shagging. I I will I will say one thing about Lord of the Rings. If I had to choose Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings, I'd watch Lord of the Rings. I mean, I tried. I really did. I but... tried to I tried to watch it too, but I just could not get into it. I mean, there's like there's one scene that I don't know if it's from the book, but it's in the movie where the baddie, whether it's the main baddie or one of his like minions, basically says that no mortal man can kill me. And it's this random person in a suit of armor. And they reveal themselves going, I am no man because it's a woman. It's like, but you are human. That makes you a man of sorts. <laughs> this is my this is my logic with it, folks. It's the, that's how I see it. But I'm sure somebody down below will happily correct me on what the fuddery it means. Yeah, but well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Like we're open to criticism here, so no shame in that. But something which I do have a lot of knowledge on, and I have attacked aggressively for it, is the Star Wars sequels. I they are not in my canon at all. I can't for me. Star Wars, like, those films don't need to be in my canon. I can watch The Mandalorian, yes, I can watch what's after that, fine, like, Obi-Wan, the new Obi-Wan series, but those sequels, 7, 8, and 9, yeah, number 7, yeah, Star Wars 7, The Force Awakens, which was basically the exact same plot as A New Hope, which is having a big, a bigger Death Star blowing it up, and basically the first plot of the first film, which is number 4. And then they random, and then they crap all over Luke Skywalker by completely changing his character to be this complete moaning moron who, for some reason, is not the same character because they hired a director who knew sod all about Star Wars and butchered these films with lackluster fight with lackluster fight scenes, really awkward interactions between characters and actors alike, absolutely trash writing. Failed attempts to be funny, and then you have the last film, which attempts to correct all that, but basically destroys what the for the concept of the Force is, and rewrites everything that fans love about Star Wars. It takes Star Wars, takes the concept of the Force, Jedi, and so on, and then creates its own plot logic, which completely detaches it from the last six films. <sighs> <laughs> I mean. I love Star Wars too. I'm not as deep a fan as Jack is because obviously he has researched a hell of a lot more into it than I ever have. But the thing I find is that, like Jack says, it does do a huge crap on Luke Skywalker as a character. The whole thing... Mark, Mark Hamill said as much himself. <laughs> but I would have been fine with the idea of Rey being part of it but I would have preferred the idea that you have Luke trying to create... It should have been more about Luke creating the new Jedi and yes. going from there. It should have continued from the original films where he was the first Jedi in so long and creating a new form of Jedi. I would have kept Kylo to a degree, but I would have made his story a bit more sympathetic. Yeah. Because... The only reason he went evil was because Luke failed at trying to kill him. Am I wrong or am I right? Well, sort of. But then uh, the biggest travesty about the entire thing, the thing which craps over, like, because obviously George Lucas did four, five and six because he didn't have to the technology and the means to do what he wanted to do originally. So he had to wait about 20 odd years to do the prequels, which... Some people hate them. I think things could be changed, but I can watch them and still enjoy them and enjoy them all in time. But the thing which crap, which basically takes a massive dump over the entire franchise since 1977 is that the Emperor wasn't even dead. Uh, yeah. And so basically, like the whole, all of these six films are Anakin's story and everything, how he is a Jedi goes to the dark side and then destroys the ultimate evil having the basically the great for me the greatest redemption story in the history of cinema and then by the time episode nine comes around basically it just 
feels like to me that Anakin died for absolutely nothing and six films have been wasted. I mean, the thing is, it could have been... The, as far as Jack has explained to me, is there are other apprentices to a degree that Darth Vader had and other characters that could have been the new big bad. Yeah, I mean, which, of which they're in Legends, but then I don't know what's bloody Legends, what's canon anymore, because they keep changing it. But this is it. It's like there was so much opportunity, but I think the problem was is that because technically Palpatine was in the prequels as was the originals, the directors that came about basically wanted to keep it consistent as the main baddie, but it just doesn't work. But the point is, if you're trying to advertise it as something new and then give us stuff that's already been done, it's not new. Well, I mean, Snoke had so much potential, but yet... I would have kept Snoke! I would have done! I would have carried on with him being the big bad! <laughs> but then... Looking back at the fact that obviously he wasn't even a real baddie because he was a defective clone makes you beg the question. You look back on it and you realise that, yeah, it was a half-assed idea from day one. Like, they didn't really... Because there wasn't... A he didn't actually have much of a fight scene. All he did more often than not was just sit in the chair. Exactly. And the other thing when it relates to Rey and Kylo where they have this really weird, like story where I was fully expecting the end of the film for them not to love each other or anything. I was fully expecting the end like the end of like episode nine to be that they were brother and sister. That's what I fully expected because I thought that's what it was implying. But mm. the thing it, that really bugs me is that George Lucas did a great job at building up the Jedi saying it takes years to master the forms, it takes years to master the force and training and so on. And then Ray comes along, never held a lightsaber before, and beats Kylo Ren, who is a fully trained Jedi. Yeah. I, <laughs> a lot of people have had this argument that, well, so did Luke. Yes, but Luke was on Luke Dagobah. Some, yeah, but Luke had some degree of training. Yeah, but the thing is, Luke was on Dagobah. He had some training from Obi-Wan, who was... Not a master, but on the cusp of being a master. And then had relative training from Yoda. So he had two forms of training from different people, understanding their different skill set. And he was reasonably... Com reason he w wasn't the best, but in like episode five, he was reasonably capable of fighting with a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. But with Rey, the only use that she had... I still don't understand this. How the fudge did she know how to fly Han Solo ships so easily and be able to fix certain things so easily? And despite never being off that planet and have never flown anything like that in her lifetime? No. How? I mean, and the thing that I think was probably the biggest kick in the bollocks was the fact that at the end of the movie, someone goes, who are you? And she says that she's Rey Skywalker. Now, while it was meant to be sentimental to the idea that obviously... Not to Luke... me. <laughs> no. The thing is, she barely knew Luke. She knew him, what, two days? If that. <laughs> like, she didn't... One, she didn't earn the title. Two, she ne barely knew him. And three, it would only work if she had to redeem herself in some way. She never went fully evil... I mean, she had like a random thing where she fought her evil self in like some forced dream or whatever. In the wreckage, in the wreckage of the Death Star. But it wasn't like with the original movies where he, we thought that Luke had turned evil, and then you realise that he was actually good all along. He was just trying to get closer to the baddie. It was just a weird plot logic that had no logic. Well, yeah, because like if. You know, because obviously Kylo Ren and like Ray, they're able to find, you know, Exegol, which is where the Emperor has been for all this time, regenerating himself, creating clones, you know, with the First Order and everything, bloody, 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 which, oh, I will get to the First Order, I'll get to that, the Final Order, actually. But if you don't want to be found, why leave Wayfinders a bloody dagger and basically people to tell you where you are? If you don't want to be found, you don't leave clues. Like, but more yeah. to the point, if you don't want to be found, why would you sit in the wreckage of the very ship that basically fucked up? 
I don't know. But then you, but then like as the director, I thought, hang on, you're meant to tell me that these pathetic little star destroyers, which probably you can't even see next to the Death Star, wouldn't even have the capability, they have the capabilities of probably destroying a, a ship similar to the size that they're at. But now you're trying to tell me that these ships were capable of destroying entire planets now, even though they were basically mini like TIE fighters compared to the previous films. They've all got planet-destroying capabilities, but they were all underground embedded in the Earth. And it makes me think, how did the crew get there? How did they manage to stay submerged on, under there? Where the hell did they come from? How the hell did anybody not know what they were doing? Like, if the, if the final order has been there the entire time, why didn't you just put that plan into action straight away? Why did you wait all that time? Why? There are so many things wrong with this. I it, hate those films so much. Well, I mean, as we said before, it's got more plot holes than Swiss cheese, but it's just... I don't know. It, I think the only slightly good thing about it was that it gave us a new style lightsaber, although I didn't really understand the point of the cross hilts. Oh, the cro well, the cross guards, actually, if you would like to visit Shadow Versity's channel, they, he actually explains the use of cross guards, and cross guards are really bloody useful on swords because what do all modern swords have? They have some sort of cross guard or hand protection to protect your arms from being locked off. And it makes perfect sense. And then you have that weird Swiss Army flip out evil ray lightsaber, but which why? Like for what reason would you need that? If it I uh, Shadowversity goes into that whole Shad from Shadowversity goes into that whole subject of that flip out lightsaber and it makes no sense. <laughs> no, uh, but other than that. I don't think the trilogy, the trilogy gave us anything but more questions than answers. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't watch those films and enjoy them because I've been a Star Wars fan all my life. I've loved the films, and these films just basically took a dump on it for me. So, <laughs> yeah. But for my final one. I honestly, personally cannot understand why people hype up the Justice League movie so much. Oh my Christ. Like, don't get me wrong, I have been waiting for a live-action Justice League for years, okay? But the thing is, the established universe, you basically met Superman twice, Batman once, Wonder Woman once, and then you got the other three, which is Cyborg, Flash... And Aquaman, only in that movie do they appear. Like, I'm sorry, but it just, I don't know what they attempted. Even like this newer version, the Zack Zach Snyder cut, it only adds like a couple extra scenes, which basically do bugger all to the movie because it's still the same plot anyway. I don't know why people are hyping that up so much. <sighs> it's. I don't know why he redesigned Steppenwolf. He looks more demonic than he does as an actual demigod. Yeah. But it's just... I. The only thing that I think they were trying to do was recreate the whole hype that Avengers had when Marvel did the Avengers Assembled movie. But it only works if you've already established a universe for everybody to be in. Instead of just going, plonk! Here they are. <laughs> well, it's like um, you got Batman v Superman. You only just meet this Batman and he hates Superman. Yeah, and obviously you have like Superman's like emotional death and everything like that. He's dead, he's gone, and so on. And then what happens? <laughs> he gets revived. Like, like instantly, like that. <laughs> the thing is, that is an amazing story. Superman. The Death of Superman is an amazing story and there is an animated movie that's based around it and there is so much more to it. Like, in the original Justice League movie, he gets a black and silver suit. In the concept of the story, is basically the black and silver suit is a way of absorbing more solar radiation so he can heal faster because... 
So the original story of um, Death of Superman was that he did actually die, but because fans hated it so much, writers panicked and basically brought him back to life, but they gave a really bullshit answer and basically said that, no, he didn't die, he just went into a healing coma. Well, I didn't, well, no, he dead, stone cold, dead, gone, he, pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead, gone, no chest, nothing. Yeah, so then basically Superman goes into a healing coma, he gets sent to the Fortress of Solitude and basically gets given the black and silver suit to absorb solar radiation as he's healing until the point he's physically capable to fight again. And then within that, you also get the Eradicator, you get Cyborg Superman, and you get Su uh, Superboy. Three different, and you also get Steel. Four different replicants of Superman to a degree that basically tried to take on being Superman. The Eradicator is like a composite of random people from Krypton, the entire history of Krypton. It's like a, it's kind of like Ultron from uh, Marvel, but yeah. full of Kryptonian history and DNA and all that governs. But because he's an AI, he does things quite literally. He doesn't see the humanity of it. Then you get Cyborg Superman. He is a guy called Hank Henshaw. He was basically a human that was out in space on a shuttle that got bombarded by radiation and he supposedly died but basically got converted into a cyborg version of superman so he looked exactly like superman but he has like half his face missing and looks like a cyborg and he goes around pretending to be superman until he gets confronted by the original superman yeah, yeah. So then you get Steel, which is, there was actually a movie in the 90s that had, oh, who was it? Uh, I can't remember who the hell it plays, and I'll have to send you the link later, but it's absolute cringe. Basically, it's this guy that likes Superman so much, he's a construction worker, so he builds his own suit of armour out of steel or whatever and basically uses superman's crest and has a cape and all that but he has like this almighty hammer kind of like my stormbreaker and basically pummels people with this mighty hammer while flying around the city and then you also get superboy which is just the clone of superman with the dna of lex luthor so it's like a hybrid between the two uh... but but the fact that Justice League decided that, you know what, we're going to skim all over the idea of the like, return of Superman and basically say that, yeah, we're bringing him back. He's pissed off because he died and all these superheroes have taken over. That's literally what happens in Justice League. He gets pissed off at them because they bring him back. But he's meant to be Superman. He's meant to be the guy that's meant to be there for everyone else. Like, what the hell? Exactly. Like the thing is, like DC, please, for the love of fuck, just try a bit harder expanding the universe, not rushing everything. Like every sodding thing you do, you rush it and you ruin it. Okay, like you ruined Titans. Okay, I've been watching season three of Titans. They brought in the idea of Red Hood. Like, why? It was way too soon. Jason should have died in the beginning of season two, and then they could have brought him back midway through the new season, season three. No, they decide that they kill him off at the beginning of season three and then bring him back within the, like, same episode. What's up with that? It's, I mean, like, another query which we've always said for DC is that DC has a plethora of unused characters, which are really good, but they've not been used yet. Well, I mean, it... they're slowly getting there. Like, with the Stargirl series, amazing, because it shows off Earth 2, the, like, plethora of classic heroes, the first-gen heroes that they had, and their offspring, which is amazing. You get, like, uh, Doom Patrol, absolute Fucking nonsense. Like, I swear to God, oh. I am tripping balls when I'm watching it, but it's uh, lovely. 
Oh, it's absolutely... Doom Patrol, if you've never watched it, it's absolutely fabulous. Like, it's got Brendan Fraser in it. What else it's, can you it's say? It's just... It, like, it's such stupidity, but it works. Yes. And then you get, like, one-hit wonders, like Constantine, and you get Swamp Thing. Amazing series, but they only lasted one series because oh, people don't get it. And then you get Legends of Tomorrow. It's the same logic behind... Well, it's the same idea with um, Doom Patrol. It's utter nonsense half the time, but it works. That's what comics are. They're yeah. absolute bollocks. Doom, and Doom Patrol is genuinely funny, and I laugh my ass off at most of it. I mean, the one scene that will always stick in my head with Doom Patrol is where you've got Flex Mantalo that goes... And then everybody goes... I'm not saying the O word just in case because I might get flagged on YouTube for saying that, but, even though we have been swearing. But yeah, bas- basically, he flexes his muscles and everybody has a happy ending. Basically, yeah, has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> but it's j- it's that nonsense well, that makes it work. Exactly. It's just so. It's got the perfect mix of seriousness comedy and stupidity it's got a mix of everything and it works so brilliantly well it's some of the best writing i've ever seen ever i mean is there anything else we can add to this list of nonsense and nonsense today oh no but i i do imagine because there's a lot to cover there may be a part two in the future but anyway yeah apologies about this little break obviously life gets in the way sometimes and you get busy but we're back doing it again but obviously this was my topic that we have planned. But so the next one will be Ben's, which is... I want to try and find plot holes within sci-fi weaponry. Because there is a lot of movies where oh, you got this. <laughs> lots of random sci-fi weapons that just seem to defy the logic in which it's been made for. And I'm sure there's probably a list out there somewhere. If not, me and Jack will compose it. Or if anyone's watching, give us some ideas down below. We're more than happy to hear your thoughts. But, I mean, let's have a think. You have Terminator, okay? The fact that the exoskeleton of the Terminator is meant to be unbreakable, right? So why does it need a skin suit to go back in time? Where, but also, where does it get the skin suit? Did it take it off a corpse or did they 3D print it? Because my logic would be that they 3D printed it because it'd be a hell of a convenient thing to find somebody the same right dimensions that you needed to send for the robot. Exactly. I mean, you have, um, I mean, if you want to like have like, because even like sci fi. Um... Yeah, because even with, even with sci-fi, if you want to have something that's indestructible, adamantium, indestructible, Wolverine's claws, and the only thing that can break adamantium is adamantium. Yes. But there we go. If you have any other ideas on what we should talk about in the future, drop us down a comment down below. And again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Players, people. Yeah.